Okay, well, uh, well, thanks for coming once again. Uh, the purpose of the, of the media conference today, from, from our perspective, is to release some CCTV footage and some still shots from the CCTV. Um, the CCTV depicts a number of people who were in the vicinity of uh, Mays Avenue and uh, Leichhardt Street and Wembley Road um, on the night in question during the, uh, the relevant time periods. So we would seek to have uh, the images um, broadcast and we would ask those people to come forward. Now, I should stress that these people are not suspects. They're mere, merely people who we have identified as being in the area at the time, and, uh, and we wish to speak to them to, to eliminate them and to, uh, and to basically to see what they saw or to determine what they saw. How, how much could they help your investigation? Well, we won't know that until we speak to them, obviously, but, uh, you know, uh, potentially they could have seen something that is very relevant to the investigation. Just explain the two locations and the time periods that they uh, the CCTV that we're releasing there today is um, the first location is the, the overhead bridge that um, runs across the railway line from Jacaranda Avenue across to Mays Avenue. Um, and the other location is the 7 Eleven um, service station there on Wembley Road. The, the time periods are between um, 8 30, um, uh, actually 8 o'clock. Some of the CCTV goes back as far as 8 o'clock, so between 8 o'clock and, and um, half past 9. As in regards to the people going across the rail bridge there, it appears that you think they've got very distinctive clothing that other people would notice? Oh, look, I, th I think the CCTV alone is, and, and the still images are quite sufficient for the people to be identified. You can see not only their clothing, but you can see the, uh, their facial features as well. So they, they, they can be easily identified. If somebody sees them, they'll know who they are. Can you yeah. talk us through that image that's from the 7 Eleven as well? With the... Yeah, the CCTV will show you their. Um, uh, a number of people walking down Ewing Road and uh, going to the service station and they can be seen with what looks look to be like a, a large um, uh, inflatable mattress. Yeah. And none of these people, you've had no one come forward at this stage that was travelling in those areas at this time that might have seen no, Oh no, we, we've had lots of people come forward. Um, we, we've had a, a very good um, response from the public. Um, but these, these people we have not identified, so, so as a part of the investigation we need to fill those gaps and, and speak to those people as well. What about people who have seen, may have seen Joan travelling um, on Mays Road and Leichhardt Street? Has anyone uh, seen her so far? We haven't had any, any credible um, reports uh, from anybody who saw uh, Joanne walking along Mays Avenue or Leichhardt Street at this point in time. So, you know, we would reinforce or, or repeat that, that appeal for anybody who may have seen her to come forward and tell the police. Is it fair to say you still don't have any suspects? Uh, we don't have any firm suspects at this stage, but we do have quite a number of um, avenues of inquiry that we're following. Um, all up, um, through the information from the public and uh, from what the investigators have determined themselves, we've, we've generated almost 700 tasks, and, um, and we're working our way through those as we speak. Does that task mean line of inquiry? Yes. Yeah. How many, would you say you've, you've interviewed hundreds of people by now? I wouldn't say hundreds, but we certainly um, we certainly interviewed a large number of people. Yes. Now, that mob that were in front of the 7-Eleven. Yes. Just carrying an air mattress. That would be something that would turn a motorist head. Yes, and and we have had people. Um, we have had members of the public come forward and, and indicate that to us that they did see this group of people with the air mattress, and we've now located them on the CCTV. We just haven't identified them. Any thoughts, locals or otherwise? Is that... um, I, I can't really speculate, but I'm. I'm thinking they're probably are locals, they're on foot, yeah, they were walking to and from. So while you haven't had people say that they've seen Joanne, you've had people come forward to say that they've seen other people in the area at the relevant time? Yes, yes, as I say we've had a very good response from the public and uh, it just takes us time now to work our way through all that information that's been provided to us, but um, as I say the, the people depicted in the um, CCTV have not yet been identified and, uh, and we wish to speak to them as well. Any ideas yet as to whether you think there was a single attacker or maybe a group? No, we can't speculate on that. No. So you've put an awful lot of effort into the forensic side of this investigation. So has that started to produce anything for you yet? Uh, obviously the, the uh, forensic examination of the scene uh, it will play an important role in this, but I'm not prepared to talk about any of the results coming back from the forensic area. Uh, I, don't, I, don't I don't wish to speak about the forensic results. But, uh, but obviously that will play a, a role at some point. Are you asking for information in terms of if there was a, a suspicious vehicle or something that night as well, a vehicle pulled over on Leichhardt Street, anything like that, or you don't think that's something that's relevant? 
well, everything's relevant. You know, we, we won't discount anything. So, you know, part of the public appeal we've made is, is for anybody who saw anything suspicious that night. So, obviously, if they've seen anything um, suspicious involving a vehicle, we want to know about it. How about that stolen car? Have you tracked that down yet? Yes, we have. And yep. not relevant to investigation? Uh, we don't believe so, no. So, the people that see themselves or may see themselves on telly tonight when this comes up, what would you say then to them directly if they see this? Oh, look, we just ask them to come into the police station, come into Logan Police Station or, or call Crime Stoppers and just uh, identify themselves and we'll, we'll make an appointment for them to come in and see us. No, like, like I say, they, they are not suspects. They're merely people that have, have been identified as being in the area and it's important for us to speak to them because they will be able to tell us things that perhaps other people didn't, uh, couldn't or didn't see. There's ten people in the first vision. Uh, how many in the second? How many are you seeking all up? Um, I, I didn't count, actually, for the uh, footage outside the CCTV, but there's a group of people, I think there's four or five people in that, but they're all a part of one group. And the ten people in the CCTV are, are all independent to each other as such. There's not ten people in a group, it's over a period of time. Dave, nine, nine days on with the person or people not caught yet, are you kind of calling on the community to be more vigilant, to really, you know, not be walking the line at night and that sort of thing? I, th I think we always repeat that warning. You know, everybody should be, be conscious of their own public uh, private security and um, if they're going to go out at night they you know should uh, consider where they're going go with somebody tell people when they're, when they're going to be back yeah do you have any fears that this attacker could strike again look um, I, I just don't know if he's going to strike again I would doubt very much if it's going to happen again um, you know the sad the sad part about it is that these these things do happen they happen in, in towns and countries cities all, all over the world um, fortunately it's, it's, it's a rare incident. It doesn't happen often. Are you sure that there's just one attacker you're referencing one person there? Are you sure that there's... No, well, as I, as I said earlier, we can't speculate on whether there was one or more. Is there any further thought, any further information? I know you had the initial post mortem, but any, any further indication of what uh, this driver went through? Well, I, I don't want to. Uh, as I said earlier, I don't want to discuss any of the operational issues surrounding the uh, the actual scene, but you know it's fair to say that it was a you know it was a, a savage and brutal attack, and um, you know it's been inflicted upon a, on a lady that's um, 152 centimetres and weighs about 47 kilos, who's doing nothing more than going to work to uh, earn an honest living. So it's it's a very a very um, tragic event. Dave, in your incident room, are you starting to get a profile or a picture of? Putting all these little bits and pieces of the jigsaw together, you're starting to get something there to really give you somewhere to narrow down, or a person, or something like that. Yet? Well, as I said, we have a number of avenues of inquiry. It's it, it, generally with these sort of investigations, they don't lead initially in one area. We have a number of avenues of inquiry which have uh, been generated from all the information from the public plus the detectives. So we have a number of avenues that we're still pursuing. Is there a crucial timeline area that you're particularly interested in? Well, as we previously um, uh, released. We, we're interested in that period probably from about half, uh, probably from uh, um, 8 o'clock through till 9.30 through till, um, 9 or so. Yep. And the, the yellow shirt man that was sobbing and knocking on someone's door, has he been discounted? or? He's been interviewed and released. So you don't believe he's linked to what happened that night? It, we don't believe so. Yep. The amount of investigators, has that been increased or is that remaining steady? No, it's remaining fairly static. It, 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 we still have a very large complement of police at, um, working on the investigation. Have these photos been shown to Mr Ryder? Is he still being updated and uh, kept informed? We speak with Mr Ryder on a daily basis, yes. And he, he's aware that the CCTV footage is going to be released. And is he yep. still here or intending to head back to the Philippines with funeral um, arrangements? Do you know? No, well, I don't want to discuss his, uh, his business, but uh, I know that he's still here at the moment. So. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Can Thank I? You.